The breaking news this hour that John Crosby has passed away, one of the great Canadian politicians of the last half century. The former progressive conservative cabinet minister served in public office for decades and passed away at the age of 88. The statement from his family is quite beautiful and covers, uh, obviously, so much of 88 years, but let's bring it to you in its entirety. We are heartbroken to share the news that John C. Crosby has passed away at the age of 88 to Jane, his wife. He was the love of her life as she was his. To us as kids, grandkids, and great grandkids, he was simply dad, granddad, great granddad, our bedrock of support. To Newfoundland and Labrador and to Canada, he was an independent spirit, a passionate nation builder, an orator of biting wit and charm, and always forever a tireless fighter for the people. For his province, he delivered the Atlantic Accord in Hibernia and a lifeline of hope for the people of the sea. For his country, he delivered free trade agreements linking the continent and the world. He helmed Memorial University as chancellor, excelled in the study and practice of law, and served as vice regal representative of Her Majesty the Queen. Lieutenant Governor was his, most, uh, was his final posting and public service. He relished, the statement goes on, the cut and thrust of politics throughout his life, not for sport, but for people whose best interests he embraced as his own. On the wharf or around a table, he listened, he heard, and he resolved to deliver. John's is a legacy worth celebrating, a life worth emulating, a name indelibly etched in the history of this place we love. And it concludes with a personal message. Our hearts, although broken, are also warmed and deeply touched by the overwhelming outpouring of support we have received from near and far. Thank you to Newfoundlanders and Labradorians and all Canadians from the bottom of our hearts. Arrangements for his funeral and for his wake will be announced very soon. Those will be momentous occasions, which we will cover extensively. Chris O'Neill Yates is in St. John's and has more part of uh, what we are just beginning and what will be extensive reporting on this because you just get the sense in that family statement how much there is to talk about, Chris, in the life and legacy of John C. Crosby. Absolutely, Heather, and we've already seen the tributes pouring in. I don't think it would in any way be overstating it to say he was our most significant politician federally and provincially over over decades. His career began in the 60s as a city councillor in St. John's. Um, he started out as a liberal, which most people would not know, and was the person who challenged the titan Joey Smallwood for the leader of uh, the Liberal Party and eventually ended up uh, joining the Progressive Conservatives and, you know, served this province well and as well as he could for so many years. I mean, his contributions, you've just listed some of them, but even people who don't know much about John Crosby, who may have only been kids when he was in political life, know of his contribution. And it's not like he stayed out of political life. He became Lieutenant Governor. Um, he was you know, involved in, for example, um, a project that memorializes uh, the seal hunt in Elliston, Newfoundland. But of course, people remember as well the quick wit of the man, the acerbic tongue. But what most, most people wouldn't realize is that he started out in life really, really shy. And um, in a documentary a few years ago, Clyde Wells, one of our premiers, uh, who also crossed the floor with Joey Small, uh, with the, the fight they had with Joey Smallwood, um, he said that he went to uh, Dale Carnegie School and came back and the man who emerged as the one we all know in politics is is wasn't the John Crosby who started out in politics. And I should say Clyde Wells never crossed the floor, but they both fell out with Joey Smallwood. And he, he said himself then when he got used to public life and got used to talking in public, that he absolutely loved it. And a lot of people enjoyed his humor, but you know, he offended people too. And he took it in stride and he kind of said, okay, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. So he was a humble person in many ways as well, who could admit when he kind of crossed the line because political correctness will not be remembered as John Crosby's forte. Well, in David Cochran's beautiful obituary, that's what he actually says in, in one of the clips of John Crosby himself before his passing saying, I was never politically correct. Um, Lisa Raitt has referred to him as a lion. I'm going to read you part of Brian Mulroney's tribute in just a moment. He refers to him as a giant. I think we'll probably hear the word colorful a whole lot today, Chris.
I would think so. Colorful is uh, an understatement in, in describing John Crosby. It almost it almost seems banal because um, even his adversaries, you know, in, in I, I talked to George Baker a few days ago, Senator George Baker, who famously sparred with him in, in the House of Commons. And he said, you know, back in those days, there was a lot of humor in politics and they, they sparred, but he said there was always, always a respect and um, we saw a lot of color in those days. And John Crosby was part of that. But John Crosby held the best interests of Newfoundland and Labrador at heart. You know, he, he fought for uh, this province to retain its oil wealth. When Hibernia, uh, when, when the partner in Hibernia pulled out, you know, John Crosby stepped into the breach and convinced Ottawa to become a partner in that project. And, you know, as we know, the oil industry has been successful in Newfoundland. And, Ottawa got paid back every penny it was owed and it turned out to be a good investment. But those sorts of things, like the fact that we have an oil industry, even though it's seen rough times recently, the fact that we have an oil industry is in large part due to the contributions of John Crosby, not solely John Crosby, but he was the man at the helm. He was the man who had the, uh, the, the ear of Brian Mulroney at the time, you know. And I should say, you know, Mr. Crosby's been ill for quite some time. I interviewed him in 2017. I think it might have been the last sit-down interview he did. And that was at the 25th anniversary of the cod moratorium, the, col the closure of the cod fishery. And, you know, at that time, he seemed really, really frail. And I walked away from it thinking, you know, I, I don't know how much longer John Crosby has. But, you know, the, the strength that he showed in life, he also showed in, in, in the declining days of, of his health, and, you know, lived long enough to see his son lead the Progressive Conservative Party in Newfoundland and Labrador, his son, Chess. And uh, I'm sure he was very, very proud of that. Um, his love story with Jane Crosby, his wife, is just that. It's a legendary love story. She's a remarkable person and was always the strength behind John Crosby and always admired and supported him and was, you know, the, the strong woman behind the man. And... It's, it's very much a Newfoundland story of a man, you know, who came from a merchant family here, devoted his life to the place, um, fulfilled many of his ambitions, didn't fulfill some. He did have the ambition of becoming Prime Minister of Canada because uh, that was thwarted because he didn't speak French. But he, he gave of himself and is remembered fondly. And is one of the, you know, we were talking about this, and one of the things is that I don't think he could find anybody who disliked John Crosby, even his adversaries. Um, he, he seemed to have the best interests of this province at heart. And I think even when uh, his comments might have offended people, people like Sheila Cox, you remember the famous pour me another tequila, Sheila. Um, and they became fantastic friends. And he wrote the foreword for her, her book, uh, Nobody's Baby. And Nobody's Baby comes from her reply to John yes. Crosby in the House of Commons. So this man will be talked about a lot over the next few days, Heather, Absolutely. because he really did leave a lot of a lot of memories. I think we'll want to hear from Sheila Copps on this as well. But Chris, thank you very we, much uh, encapsulating so much of the man and just beginning our conversation about the passing of John Crosby at the age of 88. Um, uh, Chris was mentioning that he did not become prime minister because he was not unable to speak French. He lost the leadership in 1983 to Brian Mulroney, but served very prominently within the Mulroney government. And the statement from Brian Mulroney has come out. I'm going to share that with you from the Right Honourable Brian Mulroney, uh, speaking of the great sadness that he and his wife Mila uh, feel at learning of... Uh, John Crosby's passing. He calls him one of the giants of our generation in Canadian public life. John Crosby devoted his life to serving the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. And then he goes on to say, John Crosby was a leader of great strength and loyalty who served Canada in my government and in recent years is the province's lieutenant governor. As I mentioned, that was his uh, final public service role. He was one of the most valuable public servants for Canada and his province during our challenging debates over resources and our constitution. And Mr. Mulroney concludes by, he will be long remembered for his courage, his humor, and his passion. And Brian Mulroney saying he would be honored to offer a eulogy to John Crosby's memory in the days ahead. Uh, it will be, I would imagine, quite an impressive funeral service and fuel, funeral remembrance. A wake and funeral uh, and arrangement details soon to be announced, we understand. And again, that announcement uh, that Brian Mulroney would be honored to be one of the speakers. The passing of John Crosby in St. John's at the age of 88.